All right, in this video we're looking up how to determine this z-score when you're looking for essentially the location on the curve where we separate the top 5% from all the rest and that would leave an area of 45% from here to the center and we know that it's this area that's associated with this z-score on the z-chart that we're using. So what we have to do here is to look up 4500 on the z-chart to find the closest z-score. Something unique happens in this problem though that doesn't usually happen in these kinds of problems. So let's take a look at that and see what we're talking about here. So when I go look for the 4500 in the table, I'm looking again for something in the body of the table that's closest to 4500, and then I would choose the corresponding z-score. But when I try to find the closest value to 4500, I see down in this last row here, so let me just move up here a little bit. If I move down in this last row, I see that these two numbers are uh, equally distant from 0 0.4500. This is five ten thousands above, and this is five ten thousands below, so we don't really have a closest value here. Whenever that happens to you, all you need to do is to take the first one, which is 1.64, right? 1.64, and then just take that number, put it on your paper, and then add a 5 to the end of it. So it'll be, in our case, this z score is going to be 1.64, but we're going to throw a 5 at the end and that will take care of it. What we're doing there is we're actually averaging the two z-scores because the one that was smaller was 1.64, the one that was larger was 1.65, so we would have had 1.64 plus 1.65, and then if we divided those by two, we would have got the answer 1.645. So we just sped that up a little bit by taking the smaller one and adding a five to it. And you can do that anytime this happens to you on the bell curve.